There seems to be a special connection between the Royal Southern Brotherhood and Germany. Well, we are on Roof Records. <laughs> Roof Records is a German label. And, you know, so I, I think that has something to do with it. And the other part of it is, I think the German fans really love this band. Well, you're touring here quite a lot. Yeah. and. It's like every time we come, the audiences get a little bigger every time we come, you know, so. So the old school, healthy way of establishing a band on the road? Well, actually, you can't, I don't see no other way to do it. <laughs> you know, uh, you know the, the studio is one thing, but the stage is the place, you know, and uh, you know, people will buy the record, but they still want to hear you, you know, the, the record being interpreted on stage, you know. Right. Uh, the Royal Bra uh, Southern Brotherhood was the idea of your manager, if I got it right. Yeah, Reuben Williams with Thunderbird Manager, he manages me and Devin and Mike. So he, uh, somebody asked him a question once, uh, but the, the, Alm the Allman Brothers and the Neville Brothers never played together. And what would it be like if that emphasis, Devin was in the, in his camp, so he thought about it, he said, okay, let's see what happens. And, you know, he put, put it together and here we are. You had a change, it seems like you're kind of the anchor man of the band. Now you're having uh, Devin left, Mike left, now you have uh, Tyron and, and Bart Walker in the band. Yes. How difficult was this change? Well, it was, I guess, for me, nothing is an accident, nothing is a coincidence. Everything, is, is, it happens according to what the universe wants. And obviously the universe likes this band and wants this band traveling. And uh, so it, it's all about the music and the content of the lyrics and the songs. And I think that is the appeal, you know, regardless to the clientele in the band, as long as that that core thing is there that we uh, we dedicated to good music, good lyrics, and you know having people to make you know make a joyful noise with us. So uh, this ensemble that we have now, the the thing that I've gotten everywhere we went from people who heard this band all the way from its inception was that this ensemble was the smoothest that they have heard, and. We gave the bass player that nickname. He's, his name is Smooth, because him coming into the band just it, it just leveled everything out. And, it, and him and uh, Tyrone have been knowing each other for 20 years, but the rest of us just met him at the at the studio. Right.
lights my way recorded a new album? Yes, we have a new record coming out in June. And just to, to show you what kind of, uh, uh, well, we, we had seven days to do the record. We did it in three. Oh, great. You know, and the fourth day we was just doing open doors, background vocals and all of this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. That's the other thing about this too is Daryl's voice added to, you know, we, now we got four part harmony now. Mm. You know, so uh, everything is just expanding and everything is just better, you know. But I guess you had written the songs and rehearsed before those three days? No. No, <laughs> no I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying, it was magic. And it's like this, uh, we, we all met Daryl the day the session started. And, you know, as soon as we started playing, it was like obvious that, okay, well, you know, he fits like a glove. And in the first day, we wound up doing four songs. The That's second it. day, we did five. Mm. You know, the third day, we did three, the other three, and the background vocals, the overdubs, which just wasn't that much overdubbing to do. Because we did it old school. We did it live in the studio, eyeball to eyeball. And, you know, we, we didn't need no rehearsal. Mm. Yeah. So looking at your career, may you've always been part of bands. May you, you have your solo albums and did your solo thing, but uh, all over the years with the Neville Brothers, with the Meters, may, there's always been bands. May it's, it look, uh, looks like you prefer that kind of working frame. Yeah, I mean, that's the way I started. You know, uh, the first band I was in was Art Neville and the Neville Sounds, my older brother Art. Mm. And in that band was the th other three guys that became the meters, who were all so young at that time, my brother Art used to have to go and ask their mother, could they come and play, you know? And from that, uh, I went to uh, having my own bands, mm -hmm. and then the Neville Brothers formed around my Uncle Jolly, Big Chief of the Wild Chapatulas. That was the first Neville Brothers record. some words about the voice of the wetlands. Oh well the voice of the wetlands again is Reuben Williams. He put together this festival and this band, you know, he manages Tab Benoit. And Tab Benoit basically 
is the voice of the wetlands. He lives out there and he's the most outspoken component mm -hmm. out there. And uh, so we put this band together of uh, uh, musicians from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And we, we have Waylon Tipido, um, Johnny Sansoni, Anders Osborne, Ted Benoit, Johnny Vodakovich, and on the record there was Dr. John and George Porter Jr. So, I mean, you, you couldn't get a better musical collection than that, and he put that together. And the record that we did was in January of 2005, but it didn't come out until October. And by that time, the storm had happened and everything, the flood had happened. Mm -hmm. So by the time our record came out, the stuff that we were warning people about had already happened. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, the record kind of got lost in the shuffle, but the band kept mm -hmm. going. So like, we playing that jazz fest again this year. Right, it's still going. Yes. Yeah. You also well, the problem is still there. Mm -hmm. the, the problem hasn't went away, so we have to keep raising the voice about it to continue to try to get some results. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four. So did a lot of studio work, uh, playing with Bob Dylan and many other well-known musicians. Mm -hmm. Was it a quote-unquote normal studio job or did they want to have you on their record or how did that well, happen? Well, I think the, the, the Bob Dylan thing uh, was Daniel, La Daniel Lanois was the producer of that. And he came to New Orleans and put a studio together to do Bob's record. So he got what he felt figured was the best musicians to do this. So he was Willie Green on drums. It was, uh, I think it was Tony Hall on bass. And uh, uh, actually it was, you know, pretty much the, the first Neville Brothers band <laughs> that he had on that record. So I think the influence was Daniel Lanois. Mm -hmm. wanted that, you know, and, he's, and, and that's how we got that gig, you know. Right. Um, you, there's the new album coming out, that means you're gonna come back to Germany tour again soon? Oh yes, yes, the, the record comes out in June, mm -hmm. and I think we're actually coming back over here in November. Right. Yeah. Okay, Cyril, thank you very much for well, taking your time. Like, like Germany is the second home mm -hmm. for this band. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. Yeah. 
I gotta be buzzing right. 